Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. We thank God tonight for his goodness, for his mercy, for his loving kindness toward us. Uh, we're grateful tonight for those that have the ability to come and join on us with us tonight and to be able to partake with us into the word of God. We're grateful tonight and uh, as you get ready to come on, we're going to enter into a word of prayer. And so where you are, if you're driving, uh, some of you may still be at work. Some people may be taking a lunch break, uh, but we thank God for you. And we're going to ask that you be so kind that you would bow with us in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your loving kindness, which is better than life itself. Thank you for this opportunity that you have bestowed upon us. And Lord, even tonight, we pray the blessings of God, the blessings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that they will rest upon every soul on tonight. Lord, we pray that you would reach through the airwaves tonight and that you would touch hearts, touch minds, and touch souls. Lord, we're living in a day where we certainly I can acknowledge that we cannot do it without you. We ask you tonight that you would open up our minds and open up our hearts. Help us, keep us, protect us. And Lord, we ask you that the blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ would overshadow us. We pray even tonight for divine protection upon all those, my God, that are in this uh, catastrophic moment. We pray, Lord God, for the elderly. We pray for the middle age. We ask the blessings to be upon even the youth. Cover us under the blood of the Lamb. Let no hurt, harm, or danger come upon us, seen as well as unseen. We'll give your name the praise. We'll give you the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Our soul says amen and amen again. Thank you for joining us on tonight. I promise you. Uh, not to hold you lengthy on this uh, particular Friday night. and um, But there is uh, something that I wanted to just encourage the people of the Lord in on tonight. It was Donna uh, Bolger. Uh, she said, to teach well is to believe in what and whom you teach. I'll say it again, Donna Bolger, she says, to teach well is to believe in what and whom you teach. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, I thank God tonight because I believe in a man called Jesus Christ. I'm sure you that are watching, uh, you believe in the same man that I believed in. He is our Lord and he is our Savior. There is no other name under heaven, the scripture declares, uh, given among men whereby we must be saved. It is in the name of Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, praise the Lord as we indulge ourselves uh, very hurriedly into uh, the confines of what we want to talk about tonight. I just want to leave uh, the body of believers with a word of hope, with a word of encouragement. Uh, praise the Lord. I thank God for uh, all of United. I thank God for uh, my founding bishop, Bishop J.B. Thornton, and to all the host of elders, and to all the precious people of the Lord. We we honor you on tonight. And all of those that not may not be attached necessarily to the local assembly, uh, praise the Lord, but you are affiliated with us. Uh, we say God bless you tonight. We appreciate you. Uh, taking some time out to be with us, for you thought it not robbery to take a moment to hear the word of the Lord. Uh, there is, and when this is no new mystery to us, while we are uh, being quarantined, we're being in our homes, uh, praise the Lord, mandated by our local government, mandated by our president, praise the Lord. And so we're grateful uh, that we're being safe and sound. Uh, but there's a lot of chaos that is going on. Uh, people are looking at losing jobs. The uh, Dow system is down. There are record-breaking uh, jobs being lost. The economy uh, is down. They are calling for uh, a, a, a recession. 
which we all know about. They're even declaring that they're already signed the bill, going to send us a stimulus packet. Mm -hmm. uh, at the self same time, uh, we need we need faith in more than a stimulus package. Uh, the stimulus package is not going to protect us. The stimulus package can't even save us. Uh, the stimulus package, while it yet it may be helpful in a few assets, a few things we need to do, but it won't even cover everything that we need. But I want to tell you about a man tonight. His name is Jesus. There is hope in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Who would have thought, who, just think about it, who would have thought that we would be facing a time uh, that we're facing right now? Just literally 60 days ago, none of us would have actually thought that we would be where we are today. How be ever, we have been teaching and preaching, pastors globally have been teaching and preaching about that we need to have faith in God. The scripture declares, the scripture, the scripture, the Bible, which was written aforetime for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. The Bible declares that it was written aforetime, praise the Lord, for us so that we can learn something and gravitate to the things of God. Therefore, we preach and teach these things not by uh, something that we want to do of our own, but we do it because we believe in the word of God. People are losing faith. And I stopped by tonight as I've been striving to encourage our congregation by way of phone conference uh, when we have prayers weekly uh, is to inject faith into the ears of the believers, to inject faith into the ears and to the hearts of the believer. If we can hear it, it can sink down into our heart, our spirit man, and then therefore it can illuminate something out of us. Uh, we need more faith in these days. Jesus declared that when he returned, he asked the question, would he find faith on the earth? He asked the question because he understood that at the time that he was going to arrive, Jesus himself, knowing all things, understood that people's faith would be twisted. I want to uh, not beat anybody down. I don't come to push anybody down, but I come to build us all up. I want to encourage because I do know that there are some people, you may have just been getting into the church and you don't know what to do now. I want to encourage you to stand still and see the salvation of an almighty God. It was just about uh, three days ago, it was reported that a lady in Italy who was 34 years of age, a nurse, came in contact and tested positive for the coronavirus. How be ever, after, it states after she tested positive, she committed suicide. People don't know what they're going to do now. People are in an uproar. People are really going cocoa for cocoa puffs. I don't say that to be funny. I'm saying that I thank God that we have a hope in a man called Jesus. Praise the Lord. It was even eight days ago, it was reported uh, that in Tennessee, in Tennessee, there were more people that died from suicide than it was from people that died from the virus itself. I'll say it again. In Tennessee, there were there were more people that died uh, that particular day, just eight days ago, from suicide, committing suicide. More people died killing themselves versus those that died from the coronavirus. People are losing faith. But the scripture declares, he says in Proverbs 13 and 12, he says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. He says, but when desire comes, it is a tree of life. I need somebody tonight to gravitate to the things of God, to hold on tenaciously, hallelujah, to God's unchanging hand. God is not slack. No, he's not concerning his promises. And whatever he has promised to do for us, he will see us through. Hebrews 6 and 19 declares a very, very powerful word in my opinion. He says, hope we have as an anchor. 
hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. Hope, hope, somebody just say hope. Hope we have as an anchor of the soul. Glory be to God. So hope is the very thing, is the essence or the strength that helps us maintain in these last times. We need hope. Glory be to God. I wish you would just type in, I have hope. I have hope. We need hope in these days. Praise the Lord. Because nobody really knows what's going to transpire next. There's a whole lot of people that have called so-called prophesied, so pe people that have declared things that's going to transpire, uh, bless the name of Jesus, but I want to give you a more sure prophecy. The Bible declares that when we see these things on the earth, the Bible tells us to look up. Bless the name of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, people of the Most High God, it is time for us to set our affections on things above. I don't come to tell you tonight that you that you need to get ready for a miracle. I don't come to tell you tonight that you need to prepare your mind for a brand new blessing. I didn't even come to tell you that after all of this is said and done, that God would bless you and pull strings at your job and he's going to manifest himself. I didn't come to tell you any such thing, but I do come to tell you that we as a baptized believer in church baptized believing body of believers, we need to prepare ourselves because there is a soon coming king. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. And we need to make sure that we are running to the things of God. The things that we used to do, praise the Lord, when we thought we had time, we need to lay aside, the Bible says, every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And we need to run this race, this race with patience. We need to have some endurance, praise the Lord. The race is not given to the swift, neither the battle to the strong, but to they that endure unto the end, praise the Lord. Ah, we need to endure. God is coming back for a people that will endure that will endure. I need you to hold on, child of God. I need you to hold on, son of the living God. I need you to hold on, daughter of the most high God. We don't have time now to fall by the wayside, neither do we have time to judge people that seem like they don't have as much faith as you have. That's why we need to encourage one another. These are vital times. You need to check on family members. Encourage them. If you're strong, we need you to help to restore. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that we should be the repairers of the breach. Glory be to God. We need to help bring the wedge and close the gap and help people strengthen the body of Christ. No time, praise the Lord, to hold on to grudges and funny acting stuff and treating people any kind of way. These are the days that we need to make sure that we repent Hallelujah. And that we beg for forgiveness, even one to another. I want to tell somebody tonight, I feel my whole help coming on me now. I want to tell somebody tonight, don't you dare hold on to no grudges. Glory be to God. We're serving a soon coming king. Here it is now, ladies and gentlemen. Hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. So in other words, the hope that we have, it becomes the anchor to our soul. And the Bible says it is sure. In other words, it, we're so grounded in him that we're, no, we're, so, we're so enthralled in the things of God, no matter what comes upon the face of the earth, praise the Lord. I don't care if the shutdown gets even worse. We have the ability to rise to the occasion, glory be to God, and still give God worship. These are the days where the rubber really meets the road. And I want to encourage the body of believers, praise the Lord, that even though we're not in church, that really doesn't matter because you are the church. I am the church. We are the church. Glory be to God. When we move, we're the church. When we clap our hands, we're the church. When we say hallelujah, you are the church. That's why, praise the Lord, I'm glad for this occasion because this 
really is where the rubber meets the road. You're going to find out who's who in this occasion. These are sifting times. And that's why I want to encourage you. Don't leave anybody behind. Bless the name of Jesus. Pull on somebody. Tug on somebody. Give somebody a phone call. Let them know that God still loves you. And so do I. I'm not Praise the Lord going to leave here any kind of a way. One of the greatest things you could do is encourage somebody to walk with Jesus. The Bible lets us to know in Hebrews chapter number 11, he says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence. What? What is the evidence, uh, uh, Bishop L.C.? What is the evidence? The faith. Now faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Faith is your evidence. Faith now becomes tangible. Faith makes it bring it into a manifestation. So this is why, ladies and gentlemen, that's why when you're attacked, the enemy wants you to lose faith. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I need you just to type in. I'm going to hold on. I ain't going to, I'm not going to let go. I've come just too far, hallelujah, to be left behind. I've been through too much. I've seen too much. Glory be to God. In a short amount of time, I've seen too much. I've seen my mother go through too much. I've seen my grandparents go through too much. I have not just arrived to this. I was born in this. Praise the Lord. And even if you just arrived to this, I want to tell you, you were born for this. Glory be to God. And so you need to be encouraged. Bless the name of Jesus. And I want to close here. Bless the name of Jesus. In Psalms 42 and verse number 5, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me real quickly tonight. And I want to close here because there is a word that I want to leave with you by the grace of God. And Psalms 42 and in verse number 5, this is the sweet psalmist of Israel whom we know. But he left us a word on the ledger. He says, why art thou cast down, O my soul? He says, and why art thou disquieted in me? He says, hope Thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Let me read that again and let me slow it down. He says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? He says, Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of of his countenance. Listen to what David was really saying, people of God. David was really saying, uh, he was talking to himself. He had an occasion, watch this, the word he allowed himself to talk to himself. I, I've been told on many occasions that if you talk to yourself, that you must be crazy. Well, I come to tell you that is absolute false because you can talk to yourself and be and be just as sane as the next person. Praise the Lord. But the Bible tells us uh, that we ought to be talking to ourselves because we should be speaking to yourselves in songs, in hymns, and spiritual songs. Hear this. And singing and making melodies in your heart to the Lord. In days like these, you need to be able to have an old gospel song that you can, hallelujah, maybe not have the, the rights to it, but you may be able just to turn it on in your house, or you can play it through the audio in your vehicle, or maybe you know the words, you can just hum the tune yourself, bless the name of Jesus, but you can make melody in your heart unto the Lord. It doesn't matter. Hear this. This is where I'm grateful for because I can't sing, but I'm so glad that when I sing unto the Lord, he receives it. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm not quali I'm not qualified to sing on anybody's praise team. I'm not qualified to lead any song on anybody's choir. Bless the name of Jesus. But I'm sure enough qualified to make melody in my heart unto the Lord because what it does and when catastrophe is going on, it helps to settle my spirit. It helps to settle my mind. Praise the Lord. You need to gravitate to a song that helps you to make it through. That's what David begins to do. David begins to speak to himself. David begins to talk to himself. He was not going loony. He was not going crazy. But he begins to encourage himself because of the catastrophe he was going through. So he has to remind himself 
himself that it's already well. Glory be to God. And so he now says, he tells himself that hope in God. Hallelujah. He has to remind himself that whatever I'm going through right now, it's important for me to hope in God. He says, and yet, uh, he says, yet I shall praise him, watch this, uh, for his countenance or for his presence. I'm praising God. How do you do know, praise the Lord, that you can praise God enough that God will come and dwell with you. It doesn't matter that we're in the temple or not, but God will dwell with you. Hallelujah. And this is why it's important that we've always have been heard or been taught that we need to know God for ourselves. You got to have a praise for yourself. This is what's going to help us make it through. This is what's going to hold us up. We need to speak to ourselves, encourage ourselves in the midst of the storm. And so ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage you and to remind you, hallelujah, that hope deferred makes the heart sick. Don't you dare give up on your hope. Don't you dare lay aside your hope. Don't you dare keep giving heed to what the enemy is saying. Whatever God spoke to you, glory be to God, he is going to bring it to pass. I declared, and I'm sure some of you already have, that 2020 was going to be my year. Glory be to God. But I promise you, honestly, I'll be honest with you tonight. 2020 has been one of the best years for me thus far. Even though they they shut stuff down, even though things are in a, 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 a mess, praise the Lord. But this has been awesome to me. I'm excited. Glory be to God. You can't you can't fake this stuff. I'm excited because I'm praying more. I'm seeking God more. I'm in my Bible more. I'm with my family more. Praise the Lord. Things are working out for the better. And so. So I want to encourage you to turn, turn it around, look at it differently, look at it positive, and God will work it out for you. I want to pray with you before we go tonight, and I want to thank you, praise the Lord, for dwelling and being with us tonight, praise the Lord. Uh, I thank you, but I want to encourage you, if you're not saved, I want to encourage you, it's time to come to Jesus. Yeah, it's time to come to Jesus. It's time to to come to Jesus. If you don't have the gift of the Holy Ghost, you don't even hear about that too much anymore, but if you don't have the gift of the Holy Ghost, I want to encourage you. The Bible says it's for you, not only just for you, but it's for your children. It's for those that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. I want to encourage you, get baptized if you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. It's time for us to repent. Yeah, yeah. It's time for the world to repent. Yeah, it's time for the church. Yeah, to repent. It's time for believers that we come to our senses and that we say we're going to walk with God. We're going to serve him all the days of our lives. And I want to encourage you that even after this is over, don't think that it's okay to go back to do things the way you used to. Let's not just use Jesus as he's some kind of yo-yo to pull him down and pick him up when we want him. No, let's walk with God. I want to pray with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for this great host. I thank you for the people of God. I thank you for this walk. Thank you for your loving kindness. And it is in the name of Jesus tonight that we look to the hills from whence cometh our help. We know tonight that our help comes from you. You are the author. Yes, you are the finisher of our faith. We pray tonight that you would build us up on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. We pray tonight, Lord God, for this global epidemic, pandemic. We pray tonight, Lord God, for churches globally. Bless every pastor and we pray for strategy for the pastors. We pray for the congregation to hold it together. We pray for those, Lord God, that are elderly, those that are middle-aged, and those that are young. We ask you, Lord, that as we apply the blood by faith on our doorposts and on our lentil tonight, glory be to God, that you would pass over. Yeah. Lord God, we pray for divine protection. Mm -hmm. Bless your people worldwide and keep us and Protect us. Let no hurt, harm, or danger come upon us, seen as well as unseen. 
We pray in the name of Jesus that you will help. We pray for strength in our minds and strength in our hearts. We pray for encouragement in these ensuing days. We pray, Lord God, that you would help those that need help even now. That would be all of us. Encourage us and we shall be encouraged. We thank you in advance for what you're about to do. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. And Lord, we give you all the honor. It is in the matchless and in the priceless. In the name of Jesus Christ, our God of our faith and of our salvation, we thank you in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Thank you. You have a blessed night. God bless.